me. Let us talk about mythology again. This time, let us go on a journey to uncover the truth behind the jinns. When we think of jinns or genies, who are still more commonly known in the West, many of us probably picture the friendly blue guy from Aladdin popping out from a magic lamp. Jinns have certainly become our pop culture staple, appearing in movies, books, video games, and more. But their true history goes back much further, especially in the Middle East, where they are closely tied to Islam and pre-Islamic folklore. But before we get into it, please like this video and subscribe if not done so already. Now, with that being said, let's dive right into it and discover the truth behind this fascinating, mysterious being. In Western media, jinns or genies are often portrayed as humanoid, ghost-like creatures that emerge from magic lamps, ready to grant you three wishes. While this portrayal isn't entirely off, there is so much more to jinns than that. By the way, the word jinn actually comes from Arabic. Where it is used as a plural form, the singular form is genie, which is closer to the English word genie. The root word jana means to hide or to conceal, but it is really fitting since jinns are typically unseen and exist in a hidden, parallel world to our own. Jinns have a pretty interesting origin story. According to Islamic tradition, Jinns were created by God from smokeless fire, while humans were created from clay and angels from light. These beings, though invisible, share many characteristics with humans. They live in societies, have families, and even follow different religions. But long before Islam, Jinns were only part of the Arabian folklore. Scholars aren't sure where the idea of jinns first originated, but some believe they may have been ancient gods or spirits that once roamed the desert and old ruins, causing mischief or guiding travelers. Jinns weren't just limited to Arabia; they likely have ancient roots in Mesopotamia, and creatures resembling jinns. Have been found in myths from areas like modern-day Syria. In these ancient stories, jinn-like beings were often malevolent spirits, wandering desolate places. Today, the concept of jinns has spread far beyond the Arabian Peninsula, becoming a prominent part of Islamic culture and folklore across the Middle East and North Africa. Jinns, though hidden from our senses, are powerful and have abilities that go far beyond what humans can do. They are often connected to deserts, old ruins, and even cemeteries. Many stories tell of jinns taking the forms of animals, especially snakes, or even possessing humans, influencing their actions and thoughts. You see. That is a kind of a common trait throughout various mythologies. In Arabic, the word majnun, meaning crazy, literally translates to possessed by a jinn. This idea of possession shows how deeply rooted jinns are in local beliefs. It's easy to assume that jinns are the Islamic versions of demons, but that's not quite right, though. Jinns, like humans, Can be good, bad, or neutral. They aren't inherently evil. In fact, some jinns are seen as sources of inspiration. Many pre-Islamic Arab poets claim that jinns helped them write their verses, almost like a supernatural muse. And there's your keyword. In ancient Greece, there were similar beings called daimons. Spirits that could be good or bad, guiding or misleading humans. Jinns kind of work in the same way, helping 
or harming, depending on their nature. When Islam spread across the Middle East, jinns didn't just disappear. They were incorporated into Islamic theology and mentioned several times in the Quran. In fact, there's an entire chapter called Al-Jinn that talks about them. One of the most famous jinns in Islamic tradition is Iblis, who later becomes, you guessed it, Satan. According to some interpretations, Iblis was once a great jinn who refused to bow to Adam, the first human, and was cast out of heaven. This rebellion marks him as a leader of the evil jinn, known as Shayatin, or devils. Now, let's have a closer look at the different types of jinns, and buckle up, because it's a wild ride. First off, we have Shaitan. This is your classic evil or rebellious jinn, like the troublemakers of their world. Their job is to mess with humans by planting wicked ideas in our minds. And the leader of all shaitans is Iblis. And if you listen closely to that, it sounds very similar to another word. Satan, or Satan. Yeah, but they both come from the same Hebrew word, which means one who opposes Satan. Next, we have al Chatum. Ever had sleep paralysis? Meaning, you are awake but can't move? This creepy jinn sits on your chest while you are asleep, making you feel paralyzed when you wake up. It's linked to strange noises that suffocating feelings some people get during sleep paralysis. By the way, it's of course also blamed for nightmares and insomnia. Next, we have Amer, resident jinn. And these guys like to live among humans, often hanging out in bathrooms, basements, or old rooms. Normally harmless, but of course be careful. Pouring hot water in the wrong place or throwing stones in the wilderness can upset them and they will get their revenge with scratches, burns or simply by moving stuff around in your house. Next we have Al-Jin, al a lover jin, and these are your romantic types. And though it's more creepy than cute, they are like the Incubus or succubus of Western folklore, seducing humans and messing with their relationships, causing exhaustion, depression, and basically all around chaos in their lives. Then there are Adil Hab. This jinn lurks in the sea, appearing to sailors as a human like figure, covered in algae, known for causing ships to lose their way or attacking boats. They are bad news for anyone out at sea. Then, Arasat, the treasure guarding jinn. Well, that sounds interesting. These powerful beings will harm anyone who tries to steal their treasure. Not so interesting anymore. Often, they appear as black snakes or scorpions. But sometimes, they are just a cloud of smoke. The best way to avoid their wrath? Of course, recite Quranic verses, I am a magician, or offer them red mercury, a magical substance said to be their favorite. Then there is Sila, a female jinn with shade shifting powers. Sila disguises herself as a beautiful woman to lure a man into the desert, where she then devours them. That sounds awful. In some modern stories, though, she is more of a nature spirit who helps people and lives among humans. Quite a change, I think. Now, the ghoul, the boogeyman of Arabian folklore. This monster jinn lurks, you guessed it, in graveyards and abandoned places, feeding on, well, corpses. 
Sometimes, they take the form of hyenas or even familiar people to trick their victims. That sounds very cruel. Then, we have the Marids. These are top-tier demons. We are talking powerful, rebellious, and always evil. They've mastered black magic, and they are dangerous. Trust me. In Arabian mythology, though, Marids are also known as Sea Jin. Sometimes granting wishes. But be careful, they have their price. Think of them as the genie you do not want to mess with. And last, the Ifrits. These are the masters of fire and the most powerful and feared of all jinn. They can control fire, cast spells, and even shapeshift. Though powerful, Ifrits can be either good or evil. They live in a society ruled by kings and queens and can only be summoned through costly deals. Now, jinns come also in different races. Here are the four main races. Fire, earth, aquatic and air. Simple enough. So, let's start with fire. The oldest, most powerful race. They glow in fiery colors. Red, orange, yellow, blue. And are known for their destructive power. Then, the earth jinn. And these jinn live, we have guessed it, underground, and are known for their craftsmanship. They can move through soil and cracks with ease. Then the aquatic jinn. And these water-dwelling jinn are rarely seen by humans, but they possess great intelligence. They often take the form of sea creatures. And lastly, the air jinn. The fastest, but weakest of the jinn. These winged beings are always on the move. Now, in the Arabian Nights, jinns appear in many forms, some dangerous, some helpful. The famous story of the fisherman and the jinn, for example, features a jinn trapped in a bottle who threatens the fisherman before ultimately being tricked back into it. These stories have shaped much of the modern perception of jinns, especially in how they interact with humans. Uh, by the way, the original Aladdin story, there are actually two jinns. The one in the ring is an Ifrit, while the one in the lamp is a more powerful merit. Weird to say that it is more powerful, but there you see, even among the same kind, they can be stronger or weaker. The Disney version simplifies it. But the original tale has a lot more layers, and I just suggest to look it up. Or I make a video about it. If you want me to, let me know in the comments. Even today, jinns remain an important part of Middle Eastern culture. Many people still believe in their existence and share stories of encounters. To be honest, why do you need to believe in something that actually exists? Just saying. Some Islamic scholars take a more metaphorical interpretation of jinn, while others view them as very real beings. Whether you see them as creepy tales or actual supernatural entities, jinns continue to be a captivating part of Middle Eastern folklore. So, to sum it up, what are jinns? Well, they are mysterious, powerful, and have a long history that intertwines with religion, folklore, and culture. Whether they are lurking in the desert or inspiring poets, jinns remind us that the world is full of wonder, both seen and unseen. So, what do you think? Do you believe in them? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.